Now, there's a lot of things he couldn't figure out, but I'll tell you what, God said, I'm going to give you the run of the whole garden. This is a beautiful place. I could imagine how beautiful it was. Oh, beautiful. Trees. And, and, and then God created all those animals. And then he let Adam name them. Okay? So, but if you eat, you're going to die. Well, he didn't know what death was. Did he think that was physical death? Only death. I don't know. He didn't even know what death was. But you're going to die. All right? Let's look at Noah. Here's another Old Testament character. Noah, Genesis 6, 22. Thus did Noah, according to all that God had what? Commanded him. There's always been commandments. There's always been laws. And God is the one that gave them. So, God, he said, commanded him. He did all that the Lord commanded. Isn't it wonderful to obey God? Absolutely. I would have been a lot better off if I obeyed my parents. I wouldn't have gotten near as many whoopings. It wasn't whippings back then, it was whoopings. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd have been a lot better off. But you see, God don't want to discipline us, but he has to at times. And he said uh, he obeyed his commandments, and so did he. And that's what Noah did. He obeyed his commandments. What about Abraham? So we got, these are the only three characters that was really instrumental in before the law given by Moses. So you hang with me here now. Hang with me. Genesis 26, 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and what? And kept my charge, whatever I charged him with, he kept them, obedience. My commandments, he kept them. My statutes, he kept them. And my laws, he kept them. Now, these three good guys, right? Adam was pretty, pretty good for a while. Then he messed up, oh. And the thing about it, he messed us up. I guarantee you. I, I, I believe Adam's in heaven. I really do. I, 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 a lot of people may not, but I do. I think he probably is heaven. And uh, aren't you glad God forgives? I mean, you, you, know, you know, he's out there in the garden. He ate of the fruit and uh, he hid himself. He lost fellowship. He said, boy, there's something wrong. Now, guilt tucks in. When you break God's laws, there's guilt in your life, right? I mean, there's a few bars around here in these woods. Now, if they, if they get hungry enough and you're out there, they might just attack you, but they don't say grace before they eat you. Right? No, no. You see, they don't have a spirit. Here is Adam, hiding from God. He heard God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And God asked, well, Adam, where art thou? He said, I was afraid. And I hid myself. Well, who, who told you? He was naked. He was uh, There must have been some kind of shroud and light that covered them all at once. And yet they had to get some leaves to cover their nakedness and their shameness. But Abraham was a, a Noah, a good man. Earth was destroyed by what? Preached 120 years. 120 years. Now, I did a lot of research on this. It's my research. Now, I want you to look at this. This is interesting. If the earth is 6,000 years old, and I believe that, I believe that. You are not, I don't care what these intellectual people and the scientists and all the mathematicians and all of those uh, folks that study the, the, the stars, I don't care what they say, they'll never convince me otherwise the earth is 6,000 years old. Now, from Adam to Noah, you know how many years it was from Adam to Noah? Well, I did research. 1,056 years from the time that Adam was be, uh, created until Noah. 1,056 years. And 1,656 years the flood came. Now, what did God do? He destroyed the whole world once. They, become, they were so wicked and so bad and after he created 
Adam. After he created Adam, 1,656 years later, he wiped the whole human race out. How many people do you think was on the earth? We don't know. We don't know, but I know one thing. They sure were wicked. Their very thoughts were continually wicked before God. God said, I've had enough of it. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when God gets enough of us, he's going to, he's going to bring judgment. He always brings judgment on this world. And judgment is coming on this world. I don't care whether be, be, I mean, I care. People, they, they don't believe it. But it's going to come on this world. It's coming. It came on this one. From Noah to Abraham. Okay, we've got, we've got from Adam to Noah, 1,056 years. And now we've got from Noah to Abraham, 892 years later, after that God destroyed the earth by water, Abraham shows up. You know, his daddy was an idolater, right? Abraham's father was an idolater. Worship false gods. Abraham, wh 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 where did his learning come from? Where did he learn about God? I mean, the earth's been destroyed and, and no, only eight people survived the flood. Ham, Sham, and Japheth and their wives. Miss Noah, Miss Noah, Miss, Mo Miss Noah, and Mr. Noah. <laughs> they survived. Eight people. Well, those eight people begin to tell the truth about God, correct? They begin to share, share the news. Oh, there was an Adam. God, God and, and you know, from, we all came from him. And from Noah and Lamech and Methuselah and all the generation. And then Noah and them begin to spread the news. Wow. How long do you think it took eight people to spread the news about this? But when you study Seth, Seth was one of... Whose children? Adam's. Seth was one of his. Seth, Seth began to call upon the name of the Lord. So, the gospel, I mean, the, the, the word of God was getting around. Eight people shared the gospel. And uh, from Abraham to Moses. Now, here we're going to take off right here. Now, from, I've got to give you this research before you can understand where I'm going. Now, from Abraham to Moses was 639 years. Moses, I mean, uh, uh, Abraham died. 639 years, Moses comes on the scene. Down in Egypt. Down in Egypt. Because you know the story, Genesis. And all the children end up in Egypt. Jacob moved his family to, to, to Nair. To Jesus. And all of them begin to grow, grow and multiply. And we got probably about three million plus Israelites down in Egypt. Moses was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter and was raised as, a, as an Egyptian and was in line to be the next Pharaoh. And he defended one of these uh, one of the men of the Jews and, and had to defend him and to take the life of a, an Egyptian and they run him out of the country and he goes on the backside of the mountain and lives back there and God is preparing Moses for his house. Now you hang with me here. This is Moses' house. Okay. From Adam to Moses though, I want to know how, how, how many years was it from Adam to Moses? Interesting. 2,587 years. 2,587 years from the time that God created Adam to the time that Moses comes on the scene. But now things are beginning to change here. Or are they going to change? 2,587 years. Things are going to change. Now, how are they going to change? Well... We're going to find out how they're going to change. Moses was on Mount Sinai at Exodus chapter 19, verse 20. You'll find how that Moses began. To, how, boy, can you imagine pastoring a church with three million people? How would you like to do that? <laughs> Poor Moses, brother. 
I'm telling you, he most off had a breakdown, I guess. Had a smart father-in-law. His smart father-in-law, Jethro, said, I'll tell you what y'all do, boys. You can't deal with all these people. You need to divide them up and pick people over them, you know. Divide them up. Get you some help. Ladies and gentlemen, we all need help every once in a while, right? I'll tell you what. You think I can pass this church by myself? No, I need help. And I got help. I got people here that are so dedicated and so committed that they dedicate themselves to the ministry of the Lord. And I want to tell you, it makes my job and not job, not ministry. My ministry a lot easier because these people help me. I don't want to do it by myself. I, I can't do it by myself. And you can't do it by yourself. But bless God, we can all do something together. Amen. When we come together, and that's what happened. Moses was getting some help. Now Moses received the law when he was what, 80 years old. 80 years old? Well, a lot of people say 80 years old is time for you to put you out to pastor. You don't need to be doing any kind of work at 80 years old. I said, you, you know what? I told Fred Lungsford, this guy that started this prior meeting over here on the mountain. I don't know if you've heard about him or not, but I, he's a personal friend of mine. I, I got a, I've got an email from uh, uh, Alabama, the, my former uh, music director in Spruce Pine. He went, and, of course, Joel went on. And went to seminary and got his degree in church management. He's a church management over a big church in Alabama. Sent me a text and said, hey, preacher said, Fred, uh, Fred, uh, Fred Lunkford's going to be over and on the mountain. Well, he didn't know that I've been having Fred Lunkford. See, that was up in Spruce Pine. I had him in Spruce Pine. He revolutionized the church up there through Sunday school revival. And Brother Fred come in there and he said, I think we, how many of you want to set to have in Sunday school next Sunday? I said about 300. 300. Well, I just give him a figure. Next Sunday, I called Fred and I said, Fred, do you know how many we had? He said, no. I said, 305. Three, this is one of the most amazing men I have ever been around. He lives in Murphy. And... Uh, He's just a wonderful man. Faith, pray, never seen nothing like him. Well, I hadn't talked to him in a while. He wrote a couple books, sent them to me, and we talked. And he told me the day when I, I, I called him, I, I told him, I called him. Man, he's been interviewed from, from Fox News. Well, let me tell you this. What he, he started at 93 years old. He just started praying for a great spiritual awakening in America. Spiritual awakening. Well, this clip that my friend sent me from Alabama, I watched it, and he's over on the mountain in Murphy, and, and he's got two men. He prayed, and then two other men prayed. And I found out that two years ago, at the age of 93, he was praying for a spiritual awakening in America. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked him, I said, how many people have you got committed to pray from that two years to now? Last count he had was 270,000 people all over the world are praying for a spiritual awakening in America. Now you tell me, this man is unbelievable. I said, okay, Brother Fred, I love you, brother. He said, I love you too. He said, I want you to do two things for me. I want you to pray for Hillcrest Baptist Church to experience a spiritual awakening. And I want you to pray for my wife. Oh, Fred got to praying. Oh, Lord, when Fred gets to praying, God just, hey, hold it, stop. I got to listen to old Fred down here. He's talking to me. Brother, I'm telling you, heaven just stops when this man begins to pray. He got to praying for us. And uh, he got to crying. He got me to crying. And his way of rejoicing. I think you, some of you, if you remember, I've told you about old Fred Lunkford. I said, his, when he goes happy, and he does. <laughs> old Fred gets happy. Here's what he says. Well, glory. Well, he said that, and I like to fell apart. <laughs> he was praying and hollering, well, glory. Well, glory. Praying for my wife. Praying for this church. Unbelievable. I'd love to see a spiritual awakening in Hillcrest. 
in the little uh, church here, Lodge Chapel, Primitive Baptist, Piney Level, Old Piney, all these churches. I'd like to see a spiritual awakening in our churches. Thank God. I didn't know I was going to say that. I said, he's 95 years old, got a mind you wouldn't believe. I said, you know what, Brother Fred? I said, you have got the Caleb mentality. You know Caleb in the Bible, he's 80 years old, and they want to take that mountain. He won't take that mountain when he's 40. He won't take that mountain. He said, I'll go. Man, there's 12 spies, five, you know, 12 of them. And 10 of them said, we can't do it. And uh, Joshua and Caleb said, yeah, we can do it. And he's 40 years old, wanted to go in there. And he said, well, it's giants down there. We ain't afraid of the giants. God said, it's your land. Go get it. It's a promise. <laughs> And I said, you've got the Caleb mentality. And I said, he's 80 years old. And I said, you'll find over. He said, I believe we still can take that mountain. <laughs> Amen. You know what Fred said? He said, we're going to pray every fifth day of the month over here on this mountain. He said, you need to come over there. I think I'll go over there. If I can work it out on the fifth day of every month, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to join in on that prayer meeting. <laughs> This is unreal, I'm telling you. What an amazing man. Now, all right, I just saw that 80 there when I said, I have got to talk about that a little bit. Now, let's move on. It has been said, I think, <coughs> by the uh, theologians that the law was about 1,500 years, about 1,500 years. What did I do there? I went, went too far. 1,500 years from the time that Moses gave it in, in, in uh, Exodus 19 and 20 is the Ten Commandments, and then 21, 22, and 23, you'll find all the laws, the dietary laws and all that's all in it. 1,500 years. So the law began right there with Moses. Now, from that time of Moses to Matthew was several years. I don't know, maybe another 2,000 years or something. Some would give or take a year or two. So the Jews knew the law, and they didn't live by it, just like they don't live by it today. But that law was enacted. But now... Things have fixed and changed. Christ was on the mountain of temptation. Get this. Moses was on Mount Sinai by receiving the law, the finger of God, come down and wrote the law, especially the Ten Commandments. Fifteen hundred years the Jews had served and obeyed that. Some of them didn't do too good because they were carried away captive because they were so mean and so evil. God just sent them into captivity, right? They didn't keep the law. 1,500 years. Christ now is on the scene. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. And I ask this question. Here's the question. What was the purpose of Christ going through 40 days of temptation by the devil. My people here at Hippocrest knows about this, to, this because I've shared it with them many times. But those of you who are listening and you never heard this, you hang on to your seatbelt just a minute because I'm going to show you something that you really need to understand in this passage of Scripture. He's on the mountain of temptation. Why? Why did he go through that for? Why did he? Man, I tell you what, I, t I've, I know what the temptation of the devil is. We all don't know, right? We know what it is. We know how hard it can be to reject those things that he puts in our way. He went through 40 days without eating a bite and without drinking any water and was tempted by the devil. Those temptations. Well, I'm going to pick up two of them. I'm going to pick up two verses. You read all the verses, but I'm going to pick up two verses to get you what I understand about the reason. In verse number 5 of Luke 5.5, 5, And the devil taketh him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, he's showing him the kingdoms of the economy. He's showing him all of the things that runs this world. 
He showed them to him. Looky here. Looky here. In a moment of time, all at once, they came. Did he really know who Jesus was? I don't know whether he did or not. He may have, may not have. A lot of times he uses the word if on the condition that you are. Look at verse 4, 6. And the devil said unto him, unto Christ, all this power, the power of the kingdoms of the economy, and you and I know that's where the power's at, right? And that's where the greed takes in, and that's where the politicians are feuding and fighting today over the kingdoms of the world. <laughs> China wants to take us over. <laughs> All these, they want to take us over. This is a king. We're part of the kingdom of the world, America. The devil controls that. And he said, all this power will I give thee. I'll give, do you believe him? Can you believe the devil, ladies and gentlemen? No, you don't believe the devil. The devil is a liar. And not only that, the Bible says he's the father of it. What does that mean? I mean, he's the one that procreated it. He's the one that brought the lie in the Garden of Eden. You can't believe this dude. You can't believe him. He said, I'll give it to you. And the glory of that. And there's a lot of glory of it. You know, people will sell their soul for money today. And for power. They want all that power. But I want to tell you one thing. They can't take it with them. When you die, you leave it here. You don't take it with you. And then he said this. This is amazing. For that, you, got, you need to get this. Listen to me, Bible student. If you've never seen this, listen to it. For that is delivered unto me. Okay? All this power, all that power was given to him. The kingdoms of the world was under his disposal. He controls it. And he says, it was delivered unto me. Somebody gave it to me. God didn't give it to him. Let's mark that off. By, the spot, uh, by elimination. God did not give the devil the power of the kingdoms of the world. At least only one person. Only one person could have given him the power of the kingdoms of the world. Would you like to guess who that was? Well, if you ain't, I'm going to tell you. Adam. Adam had it. Adam had control of this Enormous, beautiful Garden of Eden. And, had, and that was just over in Iraq. That was a small place over there where it was at. Had he have not sinned. And by the way, let me say this to you. Did you know he, he created Adam and then he took from the rib of Adam made a woman called Eve. And then he said before they ever fell to multiply. Chapter 1. Be fruitful and multiply. What does that mean? Raise children. Right. You be freight, fruitful, and multiply. What was God's intention? His intention was to create this as soon as that. If Adam had not have sinned, him and Eve had not have sinned, then this, oh, glory to God, could you imagine? Well, we'd be living in paradise right now. God would have moved all, that this earth would have been renovated. I mean, it would have been beautiful. It wouldn't be like it is today. But he sold out to the devil. The devil lied to Eve and she gave in. And therefore, they were fruitful and multiplied. But the first two children that they procreated, one of them killed his brother. Right? That's what sin does, right? That's what sin does. I'm taking my time. If I don't get through today, I'll finish it next week. Amen? Y'all show back up next Sunday, won't you? I know this crew will. And, and, and I'm telling you, I, I want to gift you. you got to see this. you got to see this. It was delivered unto me. Adam said, here, Satan, this is yours. And boy, has he used it destructively. And then he said, Look at the latter part of that. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. He's going to give it to who? Somebody that will build a church. Somebody that will preach the word of God. Somebody will do that. Who's he going to give it to? 
He's going to give it to those people that will follow his leadership. He's going to give it to the people that will do something destructive because he hates God, hates the church. He uses all that enormous power to bring destruction, and that's what he's doing today. Do I get an amen on that? He's using it today in a destructive way to destroy the world. That's what he's doing. Get this point. Satan was trying to resurrect the old man. You say, what are you talking about? This is God. Did he know it was God's son? Don't know. No, no. Here's my point. I talked to God about that. I said, okay, here's Jesus. He's a human being now. This is a human being. Look at the day. You got it. He's, he's the son of God. He's the son of man. Here and on display here is the son of man. The Son of Man is on display here. That speaks of His earthly body. That speaks of a terrestrial body. You've got to understand that. That's what's on display in the temptation. He tried. Now let me get this back because I didn't deal with it a minute ago. He tried to get the devil to, I mean the devil tried to get Christ to turn a rock into bread. Right? Amen. Yeah. That was the first temptation. Why, if you be the Son of God, you turn that rock into bread. Well, you and I know that he could have done that, right? Of course it could. He was God. He's God's son. He said, he said this, it is written, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from God. He said, no, do I? I ain't going to turn that into bread. I got God's word. I don't have to do that. That's the humanity of him. Now you say, wow, jump from the pinnacle of the temple and your angels will undergird you and float, take you right down. No. No, there's a thing called gravity. And that gravity pulls you down. Could he have done that? Absolutely. But his humanity is still in focus here. And all of that. Now, he didn't know, I assume, my opinion, that maybe he just didn't know who Jesus was. But Jesus put on one of the most beautiful pictures of proving that the devil could not make you do anything. He can suggest you do it. And he can tempt you to do it. But he can't make you do it. He did not. This is one thing you need to get. He did not. Could he have used his supernatural godly powers to resist the devil? Of course. But he didn't. For what reason? To prove a point that Adam did not have to yield to the devil. And I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, you do not have to yield to the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. When you go through those temptations, and you will, let me tell you something. Jesus is going to be right there with you. And that, oh, glory. Are you feeling good? <laughs> are, you, are you getting this? When you go through these temptations, I want you to know, remember, Jesus has been there way before you and way before me. And he resisted the devil in his flesh. He resisted him in his human nature. Because he said, it's written. You say, well, how am I going to do it? First thing, you need to learn the Bible. You need to have a Bible reading program. You need to study the Bible. Because when he comes to you, quote the scripture to him. That's what Jesus did. Amen. Does that make sense? He just quoted the scripture to him. Oh, Lord. It goes by in a hurry. Satan was trying to resurrect the old man. That's just exactly what he's going to try to do in your life and my life. He's going to try every way in the world to resurrect this old nature in you. You still got it. It's not done away with. When we got saved, don't you think, well, it's gone. I don't have no desire to do this. No, you still got the desire to do it. <laughs> I still got the desire to do it. But my, but my desire to go to church and live for Jesus and read the Word of God overpowers my evil nature desire, right? Because I've let it. Y'all listening to me? Yeah, I let it. And you folks need to do that. 
He wants to resurrect that old nature in you. And he's done it a masterful job because today we've got a lot of church people who used to be faithful to the church. They quit the church because the old man has been resurrected in them and now they're living way back again like they used to live before they got saved. Now, I'm not saying they're not saved. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. If they have been, they're going to get a whooping. <laughs> they're going to get, when God gets through with you, if you've been saved and you've left the church and you're back out there and letting that old nature be resurrected, you're going to be in deep trouble. He's going to get your attention. They say, God can't get my attention. You know, you got another thing coming. He knows how to get your attention. He knows how to get my attention. Amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Satan, the whole thing. I, 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 I got two more mountains and I can't finish today. Like, whoop, hey, y'all going to show up next Sunday? We're going to do it again. I, I mean, this is good stuff. I tell that God, I'm going to take my time. I want to examine all these scriptures. I want to give word studies. I want to get them all out. But the basic thing of this mountain, the law was given by Moses. Now I'm closing it. The law was given by Moses. 1,500 years it went through it. And Jesus come over here. 1,500 years. And then he instituted, he, had took a, he, he fought this battle on the mountain of temptation, went up there and said, I got to prove that man can do it. I got to prove that humanity can resist the devil. And that's the whole purpose of the temptation was to prove that you and I too could be winners just like he was. He didn't use his uh, intellect, I mean, human power, uh, godly powers. He didn't use them. He defeated him in the human blood by knowing the word of God. Amen. Now, oh boy, I can't wait till next Sunday. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. When you identify with Jesus, now you get this. Take this with you home. Just take it home with you. When you identify with Jesus through the new birth, and when I identify with Jesus through the new birth, get this. Jesus died for our sins, Right? Jesus died for our sins. I identify with that. I identify with that, and I believe that. So if I identify with that, then I have died also. He died for my sins. Now I have died to my sins. I'm dead to my sins. Okay? I'm dead to them. He died for my sins. I'm dead to my sins. And if you're a believer, you're dead to your sins. <laughs> okay. Now, what else? What else? Well, when we look at the scripture, you know, and you'll, you'll find it right here in the scriptures, you know, uh, when he, and so if he died to, for my sins, I'm dead to sins, then he arose from the grave physically, right? Now, how am I going to identify with that? Okay, I can identify dying to my sins, but how am I going to identify re resurrection? I had a spiritual resurrection. I had a spiritual resurrection. His was a physical resurrection, but I identify with him in his physical resurrection because I have a spiritual resurrection. I've been raised from dead works unto life. I'm now a child of God. See, I can identify with his death and resurrection. Now, I can identify with his resurrection because I've been resurrected spiritually, right? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. All right, now what's the next thing? Okay, well, if I can identify with his death, I can identify with his resurrection, I can identify with his ascension. Ascension? He left this earth and went right back into glory. Bless God, that's what I'm waiting on, ain't you? I'm waiting on the ascension. <laughs> Whenever he says it's time to call you home, it's time for you to come home, I'm going to leave this world. I'm going to... Bless God, I'm telling you, I'm going to go right through the atmosphere. I won't need a space suit. I won't need nothing. I'll just go right straight on to be with God. I'll identify with his ascension, and I'll go and walk in and say, Whoo I'm glad to be home. Amen? I identify with his death. I identify with his resurrection. I identify with his ascension because we're going home. All right. Take that home with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Mother's Day. Love you. Let us pray. Father, I love you with all my heart, with all my soul, God, and all my strength. I thank you, God, for this word you've given me. I, I, boy, I was really 
labored and I worked and I dug so deep into this. I hope it's helped my people, God. I really do. It's certainly helped me, God. It helped me. I hope it helps those people that listen to us. We got a lot of folks listening, listening to this message from different states, and and God, God, good people, and God. This might be somebody that's not not saved. They might be somebody out there that's lost, or they could be somebody out there that's backslid. The, the devil's resurrect that old nature in them. God, they need to get back in church. They need to get back in the house of God and get to working for you, Jesus. And it could be somebody not saved. God, I pray, Lord, that you bring conviction in their life. Hold Holy Spirit, knock at their heart's door and reveal to them how much you love them and that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus, for this wonderful morning. I'm having a wonderful time in the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you did this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.